Hey guys, it's Schroeder. I'm out here at the Black Hills National Forest. As you can see, I'm kind of outside Rapid City. There's this forest sign over my shoulder there. That's Highway 16 in the background, just past uh, Reptile Gardens and Bear Country. Going like you're going to Hill City and Rockerville, that type of thing. Hey, I'm out here in front of this geology sign. And our goal today is to find the Stradable Fault. I'll flip this around so you can see it. Stradable Fault on that picture right there. Right there. Okay. It's a little bit difficult to find. We're going to do our best today to do that. But it's back on this hillside behind me. Right back there along the road cut. Okay. That's where we're trying to go. So me, my dog Sprocket, my camera are going to try to beat this snowstorm that's coming in. And we're going to go out there and try to give you an overview of the Straddle Bowl, the geology that's going on with this fault. So you can come out here and hopefully get an idea of what's going on in the hills. Hey guys, I've moved up the road to where I'm standing in the road cut. I'm just up the road from that geology sign back towards Rockerville past my car there pulled off to the side of the road. Anyway, I'm standing basically where scientists know there is a fault underneath me. What do I mean by that? Well, we've got two different types of rock. We've got Madison or Paha Sapa limestone right here, coming back to about right here. Somewhere in this area it stops. And then from that point forward going a little ways, you've got Deadwood sandstone, of two totally different types of rock. Now you can't see that sandstone, because it's underneath grass and trees right now. But you dig down below the soil and you've got nothing but sandstone. To try to give you an idea of what this area would have looked like before the fault moved the earth, here's a picture on the left showing the cliff face at Highway 44 off by Falling Rock. And as you can see, you've got limestone, the Pahasapa limestone at the top. Underneath that, you've got the Englewood formation. And below that you've got this deadwood formation of sandstone and that deadwood formation looks almost reddish in this picture now in reality it's more of a, a dark orange or brownish color but that's the way it would have looked here at the strato bowl yet right now we don't have that well something had to have happened those two types of rock were not formed at the same time in earth's history they were not formed at the same time in Earth's history. So in order for those two types of rock to be next to each other, the Earth had to have moved. And that's why scientists know there was a fault right here. But it's crazy to think about an entire um, huge landform shifting like that. But this is about as close as we can get to actually seeing the remnants of that. We have a general idea that the fault runs basically right through here where I'm standing and it continues on into those trees right there towards the rim of the straddle bowl. So that's where I'm going next. So I moved up the road again back towards Rapid City to the trailhead for the straddle bowl. And now Sprocket and I, there he is, hanging out, chilling. Sprocket and I are gonna go take this road, hike up to the rim of the straddle bowl and see what we can figure out. Rocket, you're going the wrong way. This is going to take forever. What are you doing? Trail's back this way. Seriously? Dog? Really? Ah. Okay, I got Sprocket moving the right way now, finally. So hopefully we can actually make some progress towards the rim of the Straddle Bowl. Get a good look out and I can give you some overview of the history of the area and maybe just give you a lay of the land so you can figure out what's going on during your activity today in class. All right, well, I've moved up the trail a ways towards the Stradable Rim, and what I found is some gray stone. Basically, this is still limestone. It's that Madison or Pahasapa limestone exposed along the road, which is what we should be seeing at this point. But what I'm looking for 
is where that gray rock meets with kind of a yellowish or even a weathered looking sandstone. If we can find that, then maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find the fault. So I gotta keep going. All right, so I've moved my way off the trail. There's like a road that comes in from the trailhead. And if you move off to the left, you'll eventually find the cliff face, which is what I'm standing on right now. Now first, obviously, I wanna tell you to be safe if you come out here. This is a big, sharp, steep cliff. You could die if you fall off this thing. Be careful. Now having said that, I found the straddle bowl. That big open field down there, that's it. Now, you got the hills here. This is looking west. Snow is coming in so you can't see anything. Normally you'd be able to see Harney Peak from here probably. I cannot see that right now. But I'm looking back towards Rockerville at the moment. So that geology sign I was standing by is basically back this direction that you're seeing right now. Now I am currently standing on more of that gray Madison limestone. It's whitish gray color to the eye. So basically, in short, I, there is no way to find right here an obvious exposure of the Stradable Fault. So if you look right here, I'm looking to the north, there's a cliff face right there. It's all that exposed Madison limestone jutting up out of the ground right there. Down the slope face, right down here, somewhere right in this area, where you're gonna hit Deadwood Sandstone. That to give you some reference, if you've ever driven through Spearfish Canyon, all that limestone, the majority of that white limestone in Spearfish Canyon, that is the Madison or Pajasapa limestone. Same stuff. So it's thick. It goes down under the ground a long way right here. So somewhere right below this area where I'm standing is where the fault is still. So I'm gonna proceed up the trail just a little bit more maybe try to find a little bit better vantage point and see what, I think there's some markers up there that give a little bit of the history of this place and then we'll call this one a wrap. All right, I'm up the trail to the final point of the trail hike here, to the rim of the straddle bowl. There's the Paja Sapa limestone jutting out and facing west or southwest here. There's the bottom of the rim. So my last video was basically standing over there a little ways on the edge over there, looking down. But I found a spot where we've got a plaque here. Um, it talks about the Stratosphere Balloon Explorer 2 rising to a world altitude record of 72,395 feet in, in the year 1935. And this plaque has been here since the year 1955. So there's some history here. This straddle bowl was used for scientific purposes. Why would the United States Army it says the United States Army Air Corps and the National Geographic Society. Why would they come all the way out to the western South Dakota to launch balloons from right here? Interesting question. And if you look back over here, if you get if you come out here, there's some gray plaques, some gray concrete plaques that give more history to it as well. Right there in the top left of your screen. But anyway, just to give you an overview. We're standing on the fault, the Stratable Fault. It basically runs right down the middle of your screen right there. It's somewhere right below the ridge line where you see all that gray stone right there, that cliff face. It's where the Paja Sapa limestone, that younger limestone, is sitting right up against some older deadwood sandstone. So your job today is to figure out what the heck happened here, model it, and try to think about the forces at play and how faults work. So. That's it. If you guys come out here, be careful. Don't get too close to the rock face, all right? Stay on the trails, so follow the road, be kind of nature, everything that you've learned as an adult in Western South Dakota. Now, to get some extra credit points and to get you out into the hills, come out to this point. Stand by this plaque, do what I'm doing, take a, take a uh, selfie of yourself, and I'll throw you a few extra bonus points, all right? Cool, see you later.